Hello Bulldogs, this is your proud superintendent Terry Oshesky here with another edition of GHTV Open Line On Air. Today's program will be slightly different than from ones in the past. Although I have a special guest in District Treasurer Alan Saluka, today we will spend the entire program discussing why the upcoming issue on the March 2016 ballot is so important for the viewers at home to learn about and Mr. Saluka and I will discuss some of the frequently asked questions that have been shared with the Garfield Heights City Schools and also provide answers to those questions. Let me begin by saying this to the viewers at home. As your proud superintendent, the students of Garfield Heights City Schools deserve to have the very best resources from an academic to a co-curricular standpoint. Simply put, the complex and transportation facility at Garfield Heights High School is completely unacceptable. The field is worn, the track is made of cinders, and has not been able to host a home track meet in more than 15 years. The bleachers are deteriorating. There are no permanent restrooms, locker rooms, or concession stands, and the transportation facility leaks when it rains and accommodates one bus at a time for maintenance purposes. These conditions are unacceptable and unsuitable and downright unfair. Fortunately, you, the viewers at home, can help by getting informed by this issue and getting out to vote. The district vision is that for less than $3 a month for the average homeowner in Garfield Heights, a new complex will be constructed that will be open and accessible to the entire community. One that includes a synthetic turf, a new track, brand new bleachers, permanent and on-site restrooms, locker rooms, and a, and a concession stand. A new transportation facility at the southwest corner of Garfield Heights Boulevard and Turney Roads for less than $3 a month. The community can use this. Our PE classes at the high school and the middle school will have access to this. Our community youth football, soccer, baseball, and softball teams can all use this. We need your support. And now, with all that in mind, let's begin our interview with Mr. Saluka. Let's start by telling the viewers at home, why is this issue so needed, Mr. Saluka? Well, we've addressed all the other facilities in the district. The last three of the facilities are the middle school, the athletic complex, and the transportation center. Obviously, the middle school will need a lot more work, but the transportation center and the athletic complex are something that we feel that we can do now without a big investment of dollars and a big investment by the community. Anybody that's been to this transportation center and has been to the athletic complex knows that our field is, hasn't been changed since 1934. The bleachers are rusted and old. The track is cinder, as you mentioned. We have no restrooms. We have porta potties, and we have no home locker room. Our teams have to go through the parking lot just to get to the field, which is dangerous in itself. As far as the transportation center, at once was built in 1934, had four large garage doors in a large bay, only one working garage door at this time, and we can only fit in one bus at this time. With all the new bus requirements and everything else, our mechanic has to ship a lot of that work out. So that facility is vastly in need of an upgrade. So that's why we're trying to um, put this project forward for the community. What's, what's being done to share the reality for this complex? Well, we've been meeting since last August to try to get the word out. And right now we're on a, a massive campaign to get mailers out just to share with the community what the issues are with the complex and transportation center and just what we are proposing. We think we have a, a good project here that the community will buy into, and they should be looking forward to uh, getting a lot more literature in the next coming weeks. So why now? Well, there's always never a good time to ask the community for support, but why now? It's getting older. These facilities are getting older, and it's our job, and it's uh, probably, and I would say it's our requirements under the board's direction that we need to bring a facility and a complex to the community that will be upgraded and for our students and it's our responsibility to get that done. It's There's never a right time but I think now is the time. We need to do that. It's not getting any younger, it's getting older and we have the responsibility to bring it to the community and bring the, a first class facility to our students. 
uh, we always get the question, well, we're here to educate. So uh, shouldn't education be our main focus? Education is the main focus, always has been the main focus. We've upgraded three elementary schools, brand new high school, well, I consider brand new, it's already 10 years old, still looks brand new, and a new athletic uh, building, and we have a new center for performing arts. Now is the time. Co-curriculars are just, just as important to uh, the education process as is the classroom. We feel like if you're involved in team sports, if you're involved in the band, that that is just as part, much a part of your education as ever. Also transportation, you gotta get the kids to the, to the schools and you gotta get them to the school, no, you gotta get them to the schools as safely as possible and we have to maintain our bus fleet and this is the way to do it in bringing the bus fleet into the 21st century and bring our facilities into the 21st century. Uh, we've, we've done that with our facilities and that is the next step but also about the things that we've done academically. We've added the K-5 transition, which we uh, upgraded our buildings to make sure that we are uh, being consistent, having kids in a building from K all the way up to five. Uh, we've uh, uh, purchased new textbooks and new uh, uh, computers for our buildings. Uh, in the last couple of years. We've also uh, uh, brought together our staffs so we can have some consistency in our elementary schools. Uh, so we have also done a lot of good things uh, with our young uh, students, our preschoolers. We started a preschool program, Head Start program at William Foster. We also uh, added uh, kindergarten classes to our buildings, all three of them, where we bring 240 students in every year that we didn't bring in. So we really wanted to focus on those young people. Besides all the facilities and keeping them up to date and keeping them uh, under Ohio High School uh, uh, Facilities Commission uh, rules. Uh, we also have done a lot of good things for our, uh, our kids inside the buildings uh, academically. Um, so why haven't we been able to fix these things and with general maintenance? Well we have been. I mean when you have a athletic complex that was built 1934 you have a transportation center that's built in 1934 and we're still using these facilities we've been maintaining them we've been putting the duct tape on them we've been trying to give our kids at least an, an opportunity to play on fields and bringing the community together on these things on these fields but there comes a point in time that you can no longer you're throwing good money after bad just maintaining and you try to do the best you can, but it comes to a point, like anything in life, like a, a building, like a car, like your house, you have to have major upgrades or you have to replace it. We've been putting a Band-Aid on a major problem, and I think we're doing a great job with this, but now is the time. So, so the first time we went to the voters to ask for a new stadium, and uh, uh, it was voted down, this time we're asking for a new stadium and a transportation uh, uh, center. So why did we add the transportation center? We added the transportation center is because we had an opportunity. We, we were able to purchase some land behind our athletic complex, uh, the, the gymnasium. We were able to purchase some land back there that we didn't have that opportunity the last time. In looking at that in long term planning, we were able to say, okay, wait a minute, we could turn this into a first class transportation center for a, a small amount of money, move the buses away from Turneytown, move the buses away from the athletic field, have e easily ingress and egress out of that, and we think this is the perfect time to do that. As far as the athletic complex and being turned down the first time and then coming back, adding the complex and a transportation center, the need never went away. And it's still our responsibility to ensure that our students have the best of facilities in their educational process, and we will always pursue that goal. Lots of seniors in Garfield Heights. I'm a senior. So why should I vote for this? Well, I'm a senior, according to ARP, and I should vote for this because one is you're maintaining the value of your community. You're maintaining, and I'm not going to throw the house value out, but it's taking pride in your community and being able to say as a senior, I provided that opportunity for the, the students of the district, the children of the district. That's what my grandparents did for me, and this is what seniors can do for our students. But beside that point, the idea of the athletic complex is to have it open to the community, a walking track, a gathering area where the community can go and just walk a track and get some exercise. They no longer have to go to the rec. They can just come up there and it's a meeting place. 
high school is always a meeting place for students. Everybody congregates to our high school. It's a meeting place for seniors too. Where they can go up there, we can hold events, not just school events. You can hold other events up there, and it's a place where everybody can go and gather and be a, and show pride in the community. Well, the big question: How much is it going to cost? Less than three dollars a month. And how do we get that? Less than three dollars a month. We took the average homeowner cost and multiplied it by the millage that we're asking for, and it turns out to be less than $3 a month. There seems to be a lot of question on how we arrived at that figure. All I can say is when you calculate that cost, and we have a calculator up on our website, um, www.citizensforgarfieldheights.com, you put in your house value, it will calculate your monthly cost. What I caution people to do is when they do the calculation, please don't use your market value. You're taxed on your assessed value of your property, which is 35% of the market value. That seems to have gotten lost with a few people from what I'm reading in the, uh, the Twitters and on Facebook, is that they're, they're lying to us, we are not. You need to use the right figures when calculating your tax. But less than $3 a month, and what house value am I talking about? $75,000 average home value. So if your house is less than $75,000, your, your monthly tax will be less than 75,000. Where can you get a first class athletic complex and transportation center for less than three dollars a month? So who's going to benefit from this complex? Well we know that our, our, our athletes are going to benefit football, soccer, baseball, track. But we're, you know, who else is going to benefit are the PE classes, the science classes, the band. The peewee teams are going to benefit just and soccer, futsal, soccer, peewee football, baseball teams can go on there and practice. The community will benefit this. They can go out there. They can run sprints. They can walk on our track. So it's not just geared towards high school students. It's geared towards the whole community. Whole community will have access to this. So the, the, the information that's out there is, well, why didn't they build this when they built the, the high school? And, uh, you know, here we're 12 years away. Now we're asking for, uh, for this complex that should have been built when the high school was built. Well, I can't officially address what was said back then because I wasn't here. But I can go, I can tell you going back through the notes is I know that the, when the high school proposal first came on and then working with the Ohio Facilities Commission is that the vision was to build after the, the high school was done and the elementary schools were completed, the vision was next to do a transportation center and an athletic field. That was the global vision of doing that. Um, I think maybe what got lost in the translation or, and people remember things 12 years later how they want to remember it, but I think the Ohio Schools Facility Commission does not fund transportation and athletic complexes. They only fund classroom space or, or other things that deal with the classroom. So I think the idea was let's get these built as part of different phases and then when we get down the road and we get our funding back from OSC, we will look at that next piece of the, uh, the facility um, issues there. And I think that was the overall vision when we were trying to say it's the master plan for that area. When you, when you think about and you look at uh, other complexes uh, and other school districts who have uh, football fields, what are some of those football fields that are around us that have new ones? Well, um, what I see right now where I'm at is uh, Brexville Broadview Heights has one, North Royalton has one, Kaga Heights, uh, Cleveland Central Catholic, Brooklyn, Cleveland Heights, Bedford, Maple Heights just put theirs in, and we were there last year with a beautiful facility. Independence, Parma, all have these types of facilities. We can see that. Benedictine, too, has that type of facility. So we have, everybody is going to that and is going to the surrounding uh, communities. And actually, if you just look at the communities directly around us, everyone has this type of facility but us. And it's our turn. It is our turn. Um, Yes, it is. And, and I got to say, you know, coming from the treasurer's side in the long run with maintenance costs and everything, it is an investment in the future of our children, but it's also an investment in to save money going forward with a, a new transportation center and a new field bleachers because there's less maintenance costs. So it is our turn. And uh, in the long run, it is a great deal for the community and it's something the community will be uh, have much pride in when we get this done. So there you have it. 
Issue 22 is a much needed upgrade to the school's facilities at Garfield Heights High School and transportation facility. We need your help. Many other school districts around Garfield Heights have beautiful athletic complexes, and our Bulldogs deserve better. The current state of the field is unacceptable, unsuitable, and unfair. The vision we have for this complex is to make a state-of-the-art facility for our high schoolers, middle schoolers, community athletic youth leagues, and everyone in this community to use. Please visit the campaign website at www.citizensforgarfieldheights.com. Call the school district information if, if it's available at all of our schools. Together, we will all continue to be proud of our Garfield Heights City Schools and our community. Thank you for watching, and as usual, go Bulldogs!